What is controller area network? Can bus output signal? Can bus components? Can data transfer process? Can bus data message structure? Summary, how the CAN system works. Frequently asked questions. What is controller area network? The controller area network is a vehicle bus standard designed to allow electronic control units and devices to communicate with each other in applications without a host computer. As an alternative to conventional multi-wire looms, CAN bus allows various electronic components such as electronic control units, microcontrollers, devices, sensors, actuators and other electronic components throughout the vehicle to communicate on a single or dual wire network data bus up to 1 megabit per second. The CAN bus is a message-based protocol designed originally for multiplex electrical wiring within motor vehicles but also can be used in many other contexts. CAN system schematic diagram shows some of the possible units or devices that can be connected onto the CAN bus. CAN bus output signal shows CAN high and CAN low differential output. Status of bit with the value 0 equals 2.5 volts differential voltage equals dominant state. Status of bit with the value 1 equals 0 volts differential voltage equals recessive state. Typically the CAN bus is made up two wires, CAN H and CAN L which connect to all the devices in the network. The signals on the two CAN lines have the same sequence of data, but their amplitudes are opposite. So if a pulse on the CAN H line goes from 2.5 volts to 3.75 volts then the corresponding pulse on the CAN L line goes from 2.5 volts to 1.25 volts. By sending the data in equal and opposite ways like this allows in equal and opposite ways like this allows being corrupted. CAN bus components. In this diagram shows an example of two connected devices as well as the components that make up a CAN bus, CAN controller, CAN transceiver, two data bus terminals and two data bus lines. CAN controller. CAN controller receives the transfer data from the microcomputer integrated in the control unit or device, also known as CAN node. The CAN controller processes this data and relays it to the CAN transceiver. Also, the CAN controller receives data from the CAN transceiver, processes it and relays it to the microcomputer integrated in the control unit or device. CAN transceiver CAN transceiver is a transmitter and receiver in one. It converts the data which the CAN controller supplies into electrical signals and sends this data over the data bus lines. Also, it receives data and converts this data for the CAN controller. CAN Data Bus Terminal CAN Data Bus Terminal is a resistor typically of 120 ohms. It prevents data sent from being reflected at the ends and returning as an echo. CAN Data Transfer Process the CAN data transfer process consists the following stages, supplying data, sending data, receiving data, checking data, and accepting data. Supplying data. The CAN node provides data to the CAN controller for transfer. Sending data. The CAN transceiver receives data from the CAN controller, converts it into electrical signals, and sends them back into the network. Receiving data. All other CAN nodes networked with the CAN data bus become receivers. Checking data. The CAN node checks whether they require the data they have received for their functions or not. Accepting data. If the received data is important, it is accepted and processed. If not, the received data is ignored. There are two different ISO standards for CAN systems that relate to the physical layer, ISO 11898 to 3 low speed CAN up to 125 kb s and ISO 11898 to 2 high speed CAN up to 1 megabit per second. The CAN system is further divided into two formats for the message frames 2.0a and 2.0b, the two standards differ in the size of the identifiers. Standard CAN Version 2.0a uses 11-bit identifiers in the arbitration field. Extended CAN Version 2.0b supports a length of 29 bits for the identifier, made up of the 11-bit identifier and an 18-bit extension. CAN Bus Data Message Structure The basic structure of the message is the same for both standard and extended version. SF 
indicates the beginning of a message with a dominant bit. So this field marks the start of the data protocol. A bit with 3.75 volts is sent over the CAN-H line and a bit with 1.25 volts is sent over the CAN-L line, i.e. the differential voltage is 2.5 volts. Message identifier Defines the level of priority of the data protocol. If, for instance, two CAN nodes want to send their data protocol simultaneously, the CAN node with the higher priority takes precedence. The lower the value, the higher the priority of the message. As stated earlier, depending on the standard being used, the length of the frames can be in two formats, standard, which uses an 11-bit arbitration ID, and extended, which uses a 29-bit arbitration ID. Control or check field. Displays the number of items of information contained in the data field. This field allows any receiver to check whether it has received all the information transferred to it. Data field. In this field, the information is transferred to the other CAN nodes. CRC contains 15-bit cyclic redundancy check code and a recessive delimiter bit. The CRC field is used for transfer faults detection. ACK In this field, the receivers signal to the transmitter that they have correctly received the data protocol. If an error is detected, the receivers notify the transmitter of this immediately. The transmitter then sends the data protocol again. EF. This field marks the end of the data protocol. This is the last possibility to indicate errors which lead to a repeat transfer. Summary, how the CAN system works. The table shows an example of how the information of engine coolant temperature can be transferred with 1, 2 and 3 consecutive bits and respectively 2, 4 and 8 possible variations. The higher the number of bits, the more items of information can be transferred. The number of possible items of information doubles with each additional bit. Summary As stated earlier, at the CAN system there is no master that controls when individual CAN nodes have access to read and write data on the CAN business. When a CAN node is ready to transmit data, it checks to see if the bus is busy and then simply writes a CAN frame onto the network. The CAN frames that are transmitted do not contain addresses of either the transmitting node or any of the intended receiving node. Instead, an arbitration ID that is unique throughout the network labels the frame. All CAN nodes on the CAN network receive the CAN frame, and depending on the arbitration ID of that transmitted frame, each CAN node on the network decides whether to accept or ignore the received frame. If multiple CAN nodes try to transmit a message onto the CAN bus at the same time, the node with the highest priority automatically gets bus access. Lower priority CAN nodes must wait until the bus becomes available before trying to transmit again. In this way, you can implement CAN networks to ensure deterministic communication among CAN nodes. Frequently Asked Questions Does CAN bus need a ground? Yes, a common ground is need. A CAN transceiver has a maximum common mode voltage. If the common mode voltage of the differential CAN signals exceeds the maximum, then the transceiver will not be able to recognize the bits. Can you repair CAN bus wiring? If the CAN bus line are repaired, renew all the twisted wires between the end connectors. If a subbus line is repaired, splice a new wire directly into the main bus line. If a new wire is spliced into the subbus line, which is connected to another device, the CAN communication will be disabled. Why CAN bus is used? A controller area network is a robust vehicle bus standard designed to allow microcontrollers and devices to communicate with each other's applications without a host computer. Can a network be 120 ohm? In a low speed, can each device should have a 120 ohm resistor. In a high speed, can bus only each end of the main loop should have a 120 ohm resistor. You should measure 60 ohms over these two wires because there are two 120 ohms resistors in parallel, parallel resistance calculator. Why has the CAN standard selected 120 ohm resistors? The answer is that most automotive cables are single wire. If you take the wires typically used in a car and twist them into a pair, you will get an impedance of 120 ohm.